All right, it's 6 o'clock, uh, April 24, and this is a meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by Frontier Community Access Television. Is there anybody else recording the meeting? No? Okay. So this is for viewing for later. People have missed this, uh, this meeting. Okay, first item on the agenda, minutes for the April 18th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to go over those minutes? Yep, that's my name. changes or additions? Good, good. No? Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Second. Uh, second, all, all in favor? Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda, meetings attended by select board members. Bob, do you have anything? No, so I didn't go to any official meetings last week, but I, I did... Last week I talked about going to the Comcast event that was on Saturday, which right. which I really went to as a town function as far as I was concerned and got to meet a lot of Comcast uh, 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 management and, and line workers. And I just wanted to hear from them what they thought was happening. And, and then by a coincidence, I'll talk about this later, but the MBI has sent out their latest set of maps. Okay. So, Okay, great. But all of the line workers that I talked to from Comcast were optimistic and said sometime between the end of the summer and the end of, you know, and the end of the year okay. will be fully wired. Great. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Robert? Do you have no, I didn't attend. Okay, I attended the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments Council meeting on, um, that was Thursday, and um, it was a very good meeting. We had a couple of good presentations on uh, one of which was on the uh, Franklin County Emergency Communication System. And of course, we the the FERCOG is trying to figure out a way of donating that system to the state because of the the problems with it. But it looks like it'll be under the auspices of the, of the FERCOG for another couple of years until, until it's worked out with the state, if it's worked out with the state. So that was the highlight of that meeting. Cool. On Friday, I attended the meeting with um, Congressman McGovern uh, concerning uh, the federal budget and how cuts in the federal budget may have an impact locally, especially on community development block grants. So uh, that was an interesting meeting, and there were quite a few representatives there from local uh, service and nonprofit organizations to provide their opinions. So uh, it was it was worthwhile, I think, to to have gone to that meeting. So that's where I was. Uh, do we have any citizens' concerns? No citizens' concerns. That's good. Okay. Under old business, I want to move up the second item. Uh, letter of support for Greenfield grant for studying uh, study regarding the regional dispatch, um, and that we had a got a letter from the police chief over in Greenfield asking us to support that. We also got a communication from the oversight committee that basically is against consolidation. So I'm going to ask uh, our police chief, Ken Wament, to give us his opinion on this, uh, this situation. Ken? Well, again, I was, you know, this has been talked about for a month or so about Greenfield putting up a safety complex and maybe putting the PSAPs, the three PSAPs that are currently in Franklin County into one to consolidate them. Um, my understanding is that there is no obligation if a town signs on to support the study. Mm -hmm. So if that is truly the case and I'm not against a study, mm -hmm. I do know by reading the Oversight Committee's report the study was done in 2011. Um, that was their fifth choice as far as doing any changes in the county. Consolidation of Greenfield and Montague into a current shelter and control RECC operated by the Mass State Police. So, without a doubt, I will agree that it would be beneficial to all the police departments. Fire, I can't speak on behalf of. 
police departments would be very, very beneficial to have all the dispatchers out of one central spot. Mm -hmm. would eliminate the lag. Um, myself and most of the other small town chiefs expressed our concern at the last Franklin County Chiefs meeting that we got away from this whole thing and turned it to the state for the financial burden on the towns. Mm -hmm. And right. if in any way it would come back, there would, there would be a financial uh, part to the town, assessed to the towns, there's no way we'd be in favor of it. Okay, so, so right now what do you think is if this stays under state control and it's joined by Greenfield and Montague, that would be beneficial to us? It would Otherwise, be, exactly. it, it wouldn't be beneficial to us. Correct. Okay. And Correct. this this study is back in 1994 when we went away from the private dispatching that we right. had located over at the hospital in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. The towns, all the towns, paid into that kitty. Mm -hmm. The state agreed to take it over, and it's been worked great since. Okay. And no financial burden on the towns. Right. And and right now the system is working fine for absolutely. Us. Absolutely. Okay. Nobody, okay. There's no complaints with the dispatchers. The only complaints are what you went to with the radio system. Right. right. Un, unrelated to the dispatching system. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so essentially, doing a study of this is would all. That's all we would be uh, asking for right now, just to see what the possibilities are. Yeah. But certainly, in the long run, we'd want to keep it under state control. Absolutely. Oh, but, yeah. the, but the oversight letter that we read last week basically said we shouldn't even do the study and uh, right I, and, I yeah I know what they said yeah and so that's that's the I mean what we're being asked to sign on to is that we support doing the study or not well I well, think if you read it read it clear I think what they're really looking at is it says on this paragraph right here the oversight committee strongly believes there is no benefit in a model where the shelf and control dispatch agencies would be in a center under the control of the city of Greenfield. Right. And I think any time you talk about this, where the state is going to have a hand in it, they will not relinquish control of the of the physical building. Right. That's the reason that they wanted to put it in the barracks in Shelburne to begin with. They have control over the physical building. Right. If they're if they're going to spend their money, they're going to control it, mm -hmm. which is understandable. Yeah. Yeah. But know, so they should, want to take should a chance of a sign on to do the study. strikes or anything else, then uh, go ahead. Make some comments. Yeah, sure. Great. Go ahead. Uh, I should, didn't make the chiefs meeting, but I sent my two deputy chiefs to the, to the Frank County Fire Chiefs meeting last month, and they came back with pretty much the same statements Ken had. And after reviewing both of these, uh, they came back. The dispatch center came back with some major concerns, and they probably spelled out in the letter was. Their concerns were that if Greenfield Montague were to join the uh, regional dispatch center now, that there's two major things. They'd have to hire a lot more help, and the building the facility that they're in right now, with the space they've got, could not accommodate the extra help. So, in a nutshell, that's why I think Greenfield's been at, or we know there's two reasons why Greenfield asked, asked for this survey. One is to look at moving it to Greenville, and the other is to look at joining us up in state police barracks. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see the board recommended this survey go through with stipulations on it that says in the letter that says that we agree that, the, 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 that it's needed, the survey is needed, but we would only be in favor of a portion of the survey where they would state that. The state would possibly allow them to come in and join the rest of us. There is a need from the two big cities, like Cranny said, when the major incidents take place, where when you're trying to communicate with two totally different dispatch centers, uh, there can be a bunch of time lapse and stuff like, like that. Like them, yeah. uh, I've noticed that from, uh, same problem with the fire service. Kenny probably hasn't yet, but when we have to go to the Williamsburg area or into Northampton. Because mm -hmm. Hand Northampton helps us out, uh, us out. We go to Northampton once in a while, and there's a lapse of time and communication there because now we're talking about two different state police regional mm -hmm. centers. Okay, mm -hmm. so I can see what they're what they're all saying, but we need to. I think in our letter, if we're going to do this, we should you know stipulate that 
we'll be willing to sign on to them moving up to our regional dispatch center if, if, if it was all possible with the state approval, uh, but not moving it into Greenfield. Yeah. Uh, do you see any need for survey? Um, you know, it's this was done in 2011, seven years, six years later. You know, what's changed? I don't know if anything's really changed, uh, but it's not going to, if it doesn't cost us anything, I don't have a problem. Well, with they're asking the survey. state police for the survey money, right? Correct. And, so I, and I thought that the oversight board said it was a waste of money. They considered the cost of the survey. I mean, they were strong. Adamant about right. they were not even having a survey. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, and I agree with you, though, Ken, you know, there are benefits. You're saying there are benefits to solving the lag problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be a, a huge benefit. Um, as far as the mentioning of the records management system, that has been a, a subject that has actually been undergone for the past year and a half. Not nowhere yet. Um, it's actually up and running down east. They're doing a, a joint system matching ours a regional down the eastern part of the state, and they just put that online. Um, the state has been trying to iron out their end of it, and they're hoping to get Deerfield and then Montague onto that system by early summer. Slowly phasing the city. Uh, yeah. Start see, with, it's start with, start with two towns, and then it will expand out to the other communities. Mm -hmm. Now, if that, when, if and when that does happen, that they don't care. I spoke with the. Uh, individual representative from Tritech just a week and a half ago at a meeting and they don't care where it's housed. They just need it to be decided so it doesn't it's delay been it very long. slow coming. Yeah. Um, but um, they, they set deadlines and they failed the meeting and other deadlines. Yeah, right. well, the, 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 the state has been slow on that yep. side of it. But right here, the very last last paragraph of the oversight committee, they, should there be an interest, we would suggest that Greenfield Lane or Montague submit a request to the state to join Shelburne Control. If they physically have the room up there, I don't know that. Well, I heard they did. All right, so, so, the, so the only thing here is basically, you know, does doing this survey or this study uh, benefit us at all, you think, or are we fine the way we are? I don't think it's going to make a change at this point. I, I don't know if it's going to make any change at all. It's not if it doesn't cost us anything. I'm not so much opposed to it. Is there going to be a net benefit? We don't know that. Mm -hmm. I again, I don't think the state is going to, even if they say yes, we'll take you on Greenfield or Montague into one central piece app serving the entire Franklin County, which would make sense. I just don't see the state saying we'll put it into a building that we don't own. Mm -hmm. At a different location, right? You know, yeah. So if it's a so state-owned building. Yeah. Fine. They might relocate it to Greenfield if it was a state-owned building in Greenfield. Yeah. yeah. But I can't speak for the state. Yeah. Well, it looks like Greenfield wants to put it in their own right um, public uh, safety complex. So. So there, there was a draft. There was a letter that was uh, suggested, and that is actually in the to be signed. Right. Um, yeah file there and I'm wondering if there are suggestions for this came from the police chief in Greenville right yes I'm wondering if there's it, this letter came from yes. the police yes. chief in Greenville. Yes. Yeah. I mean it feels to me like this study ought to be on how to solve the lag problem not well the, the, the lag problem is, is the, only, the, the only solution to that is to have all your dispatchers come out at one agency yeah, but maybe there's another solution I don't know um, I don't see how there could be only because it's it's a matter of just the time of this person takes a call has to com communicate to this person and then back so it's it's a roundabout yeah what, yeah just a flow of information would, would a, a consolidation say at the uh, at the control center at this point uh, at, at Franklin County uh, the state control center as it is now would that help us at all probably. It would probably. I, I don't see how it could not help the every department. Have have, have we seen the because uh, it would be a, f a faster, smoother transmission of communication. Have we actually seen the grant proposal? Uh, no. Because here they want us to to support 
the feasibility study for the regionalization of the dispatch in Franklin County as outlined in the grant proposal by the Greenwood Police Department. So we don't even know what the grant proposal says. And I don't think we should support that. Bob, what's your take on this? I, I, I agree with Ken. I don't see any reason not to do the study. You know, we're not under any obligation to to go along with it. Uh, maybe it's a waste of money. I don't know. I don't know that. We don't know that. No, we don't. The, the, the oversight committee basically is a group that, that comes from every sector. Correct. Right. And they're basically saying, hey, this, this study just money. doesn't make any, any sense. Well, their, their assumption is that it will move dispatch out of Shelburne and into Greenfield. Mm -hmm. And that is certainly one possible outcome, but it's not the only income, uh, outcome. They said, we've already studied this, and moving it out isn't the thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, presumably, I, I mean, it's the, the new study would also have options that said, you know, this is, this is what we recommend, and then these are other things you could do, but number five might be, you know, the last one might be moving it out of Shelburne control. If they actually do need space, um, maybe the state would expand the Shelburne barracks instead of moving into Greenfield. Or it, it all depends on what's, you know, there, there's, all of that is unknown. Um, but I think the intent of the study is to clarify in current terms uh, what the options are. So I, I don't see anything wrong with doing it. Um, did, did the study in 2011 study the the uh, uh, the objective of moving this to Greenfield? Do you remember? Um, I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is what their findings were as far as consolidating mm -hmm. the PSAPs, the three PSAPs, which is a little surprising to me that we even have three PSAPs in such a small Dense population, you know. Right. Well, so oh, when we made the initial move to the state police barracks a whole bunch of years ago, what, 15 years ago? 20 years ago? 1994. Okay, 94. We, Greenfield and Montague did not want to join it because they wanted to keep their own control. Mm -hmm. Originally, Greenfield signed on to it. Um, Mark DeJack maybe was at the last meeting, and he was one of the original ones who started that uh, committee. And originally Greenfield had signed on to it. And then the they last up. minute, they backed up. Chief McCarthy backed out of it, right. saying, "No, we want to keep control of our own dispatch." I'll, I'll also note that uh, when I was talking with uh, uh, Sheriff Donnellan about this, I, I got his because uh, he was involved in the original sending of the letter right? Right. and the cover yeah. letter. Yeah. Um, he said that the suggestion to apply for this grant came from the state, came from EOPS. Well, he did. And that he was surprised that they hadn't let the Shelburne Oversight Committee know about know their that. suggestion. So uh, this is the Oversight Committee being surprised at the Wait, proposal, but it actually came from oh, so uh, the that. state. And it was, in, it was to, you know, Put all of the apps together. Sure. I mean, uh, if it, which they're trying to do across the state. Absolutely. Just Regional simply, I guess, simply by supporting I mean, this letter, doesn't that mean that we're going steps. to yeah. give approval on that thing. And basically, right. Other than say, yeah, this, go ahead and maybe the study isn't such a bad idea. Yeah, this is just support for a feasibility study. I mean, we're not. They're not asking us to sign a line about anything. Right. Other than the right. study. Is there an advantage in having all? You know, relatively similar sized small towns in the safety complex? Currently, they are. Right. Is that an advantage? I mean, will it, will it be bad for us to bring in these two much, much larger no. towns? No, I don't see where that, it would make any difference at all. It would, almost, oh, it would absolutely overwhelm the dispatch center if they were not allowed to put on rail. Oh, yeah. It would definitely well, have, they were going to crucially have, crush everybody. Yeah. They would yeah. definitely have to hire. So. Yeah. Well, well, more people per share. So that would be part of the feasibility stuff. Obviously, Greenfield and Montague have more calls than well, the smaller sure. towns well, do. Of course. Greenfield and Montague have more calls than all the rest of Frank County added up together. Right. So, so it's certainly to their advantage 
to join in in Shelburne control. Be a cost but measure for them as well. Will will that you know denigrate our service in any way? Right. No, because I I without a question as Bob mentioned, they are definitely going to have to put on more staff. <coughs> I, mean, I heard there was rumors that they, if they did it, they would have gone out to put on two more pers personnel per shift. Which wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a big deal no. because, I mean, I know down in Northampton they run four to five. Because that's what they shift. got over in Greenfield now is two, two right. per shift. Right, and they have one in mind, so, so. it would, uh, I mean, the Northampton Barracks handles every 911 mm -hmm. cell call in Western Massachusetts. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And on top people? of their regular and how many people in there? Right four or five depending yeah. on yeah. on the time of the shift yeah. and if it's a holiday weekend or things like that mm -hmm. and they have the ability to bring in a sixth so okay any other discussion on this okay um, is the is the feeling that we want to support this study I'd support it I, I mean I don't think I would support moving to Greenfield but uh, but I no, hope that he finds something I, 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 if, if there was a way that we, you know, I wish there was a way in here that we could say that we don't support the right, move right. Greenfield, but uh, that's not what it's asking, so. It's just, it. this is just a study. Just a study, so yeah. I guess we can let it go. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we sign the letter to uh, <coughs> support the study for the regional dispatch uh, for Franklin County. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Thank Appreciate you your welcome. opinion and your time yeah. on this. And your comments as well, Bob. Now, of course, I. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I signed. Of course, oh, I signed the wrong, wrong letter. One. Okay. That doesn't matter. I get the one we'll signed to them. Then we have our own copy. Well, this is this must be on special paper or something. Right? Actually, no. That's not <coughs> on special paper. But it no. has that green does sticky it, on it. With the it's true. It does. does. It makes it more official. We could solve that. Mm. <coughs> the G looks like an S. <laughs> All right. Next item is the uh, long range financial plan. Discussion of the draft. I would just like to draw your attention to oh, I left mine in the car. pages 77 through 88, which I think are the the key things that we need. It's it's, it's it starts with the financial policies section there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think you're pretty familiar with everything that comes before then. It's um, introductory material, it's, it's the, the preliminary budget that I put out every year. That would go into an updated version of this every year. Mm -hmm. And there would be a few other things um, to go in every year as well. Some of the uh, financial projections and things like that. Uh, and Joe uh, is working on getting us some of those and, um, well, all of the ones that, that that are there. Those those come with formulas built into them, so it's just a matter of plugging something in and then you see how it plays out. Uh, they might have to be amended as time goes by, but mm -hmm. um, they're, they're pretty straightforward. So the section beginning financial policies has a lot of things in it, and a lot of them are very general. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are meant to instruct the people reading and using the document. And this is what this means, and this is the general way that we're going to approach it without binding the town too much. Mm -hmm. uh, it does present some target levels in, in some of the areas. So there, there are budget guidelines, uh, and those are, those are pretty common sense. Uh, there are reserves, and, and he's suggesting that the combined balance of the stabilization fund, or, uh, this is 79, uh, um, or towards the bottom, uh, the overall goal, the town will strive to maintain reserves including the combined balance of stabilization funds, really, since we have more than one, 
and certified free cash at a level of 10 to 15 percent of annual general fund operating revenues. Yep. Now, now that actually is not meant to include the special stabilization funds like for the garage, uh, for right. example, right. but it would include both the general and the capital stabilization fund. Right. So that that's a particular target. So I would urge, um, you know, before we finalize this, that the people give that some thought. What are we at now? Um, I think we're at less than that. Um, well, no, that's uh, we're right. What's your annual budget? We're, 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 we're right about at it, and um, we're, we're above. We're just above ten percent now because the. Um, the budget, the operating budget, comes in at about five and a half million, right. and so that would be five hundred and fifty thousand. We have about four hundred thousand in general stabilization, about a hundred and fifty thousand in capital stabilization, mm -hmm. and we uh, this year, this year we have two hundred thousand in free cash. Last year we only had a hundred and sixty thousand in free cash. Right. Right. So that's one of the reasons that they give a range like that. So yeah. we're within the range. Um, and it's a way to track how we're doing within that range, to have that as, as, a, as a goal. Um, also, uh, and do you think, I mean, he would put this in any town's reserve yeah, policy? Yeah, it's not it, con. Right, right, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. A, it's a good practice. And again, it's a goal. It's like a it's goal. Not a yeah, it's, a, it's not yeah. a restriction, right? Yeah. It's just a goal. That they recommended yeah, going I, for. I, I read through this again over the weekend. I didn't see anything in here that was particularly onerous. I think most of it, like you say, is general and is goal oriented. It's not. It's not restrictive. Well, yeah. That's what we do already. So, it's just in the rating. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. So, so there, are, there are a number of, of specific proposals that are being made now, and from pages seventy-seven to eighty-eight, that's the. Um, that goes through OPEB. Uh, after that, it turns into more. Um, the, it's more internal finance, and we already these are already our policies. Yeah. For, um, yeah. And we actually have probably more than are than are in here, but uh, these are the important ones. So, up until eighty eight, though, are the new policies that he's proposing. So it's going to be very important to be familiar with those and to say, how does this match our target? You know, how are we doing this year? What's the, you know, what's the, uh, how, do, how do we stand? So from 77 to 88 are really, uh, if, if you're going to focus on anything, just um, dig into that and... I don't know, I am nothing. In... Uh, and I'm going to send a, a reminder out to the Finance Committee and Capital Improvements. And it, it also includes Capital Improvements, um, right. uh, yep. Capital Improvement Program Policy as well. Um, that's on page 86. So, uh, and the very last bullet item um, is important. Uh, the Town Capital Improvement Program assigns responsibility to develop and update a long-range capital improvement plan. Comment, should be. Uh, and this is what we, this is why we formed the committee, uh, which will identify proposed purchases, acquisitions, and projects, the anticipated year of expenditure, an estimated cost, and a potential funding source. Sure. So that's what they're, well, that's what we're hoping the committee comes to town meeting with. Sure. Um, so I haven't heard from them uh, whether they're uh, whether they've met on this or not yet. But comments are due not yet, no. um, soon. Well, uh, yeah. So if you feel free to uh, spur that that process. Okay. And um, because they are involved and their responsibilities are being outlined here, so uh, it would be great to and 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 we will expect them to. Um, Formally, uh, you as capital improvement uh, person here uh, to to formally accept this plan because then we'll communicate that the select board and the finance committee and the capital improvement Pro planning committee 
have accepted this. Right. We'll report that to the Department of Revenue for the state, and we'll get credit for having done, for having accepted the long-term financial planning as required under the community compact. So mm -hmm. that's how it all fits together. So um, this is an important step mm -hmm. for the town, and uh, it is due a fair amount of attention from everybody who's involved with financial planning. Sure. I just wanted to stress those bits, that those particular sections, because that's this is where the rubber meets the road right. for for a new approach to uh, financial planning in the town. Right. And uh, please, you know, any comments, get them to Joe as soon as possible. Uh, in about three weeks, um, I'm going to be asking everyone to formally accept the plan and and again there there will be a, a few additions his uh, his charts his long range charts but they're just they're just charts they're not the policies themselves so uh, it, it will and then it'll evolve, evolve from year to year it's not a final say if, if, if we find we're pushing it, it'll help us identify if we're pushing up against any of the limits either high or low so sure. Um, I look forward to getting this implemented, and thank you. Did you yeah. uh, get a chance to talk to Jenny about that three-day limit ahead of time for special town meetings? Yeah, there, um, there is th there's the three-day, for a special town meeting, the bylaw says to get the warrant out at least three days in advance. I never knew that. I always thought it was minimum seven, but 14. But. Well, and again, the bylaws are uh, the <coughs> revised bylaws, up-to-date bylaws are on the website in case anyone out in our listening yeah. audience wants to look at. Them. Hope we never follow that. But that's all right. That's not enough time, <laughs> taxpayers. No, you're right. All right. So in Can we in about oh, we can't. We have to through the bylaw change to change. Right, right. And. That's what they're there for, is for review and change. Yeah. All right, so in about three weeks, we should be ready to, to approve this plan with any any changes that might be brought up. Yeah. yeah, get those changes to Joe as quickly as possible because we'll have to also uh, notify the other committees if there are proposed changes from from anyone. So, right. so we're all, we all know what we're voting to accept. Yep, yeah. okay. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next item is to um, sign a letter recognizing Alexandra Williams' five-year service as an ambulance department employee. Can okay. I make a recommendation before? Sure. I make a recommendation that we don't sign the letter because she has not been even living in common in the last two years. Hmm. I uh, talked to her father today and uh, Roughly two years ago, she moved out of county and no longer was an EMT anymore in town of county. Really? She lived on East Prairie State somewhere. Hmm. Well, wow. good for us to know that. Okay, we'll, we'll table this for right now. Okay. Next item, um, items not anticipated uh, in 40, within 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Tom, nothing. Okay. I don't have anything. Tom, do you have an update for us? I do. Uh, some committee news. The uh, Parks, Recreation, and Trails Committee notes that the new ball field still has some new drainage issues, especially around the first baseline and the backstop. I'll be meeting with John Heffernan and Ron Sweet on Thursday to see how much work needs to be done. And I'll probably include a couple of, uh, removal of a couple of inches of soil along the first base side and near the backstop and then reseeding. Uh, so we don't really know exactly what we need to do now, but we'll, we'll find that out and get an estimate and it won't be done this season, but at least we'll know what we need to do when we get, have the money to do something. Okay. Unless it's not much money. So, yeah. uh, the Housing Committee is looking at all town land and seeing what issues there are in terms of potential senior housing. This includes looking for more information on all the reasons the highway garage location was set for where it is instead of in the other lot behind the grammar school. Uh, so, I'm looking for more information on that as well. 
Good luck. I, I remember some of the, I mean, there's the right-of-way issue, there's <coughs> some ledge issue, there's, there's a lot of issues, and there's the space issue, and all sorts of things, so, uh, but I'm looking on that, for that. Uh, for the 250th committee, Marjorie Held is proposing planting a disease-resistant chestnut tree on the Pumpkin Hollow Common. She notes there is historical precedent. I spoke with her about a number of details, and she has it planned out very well, including speaking with residents about it. Uh, she will write up some historical background regarding an earlier chestnut tree there as mm. well. Mm. Uh, and she's, uh, you know, on the 250th and in charge of all the uh, things going on in Pumpkin Hollow, so right. um, okay. it's not like this is going to be a surprise. There may be some other changes coming down uh, from the 250th committee about tree plantings too. Okay, good, uh, good, yeah, especially after the tornado. Because, yeah, I can't comment on it now, but they're going to be discussing it at their next meeting. So. Okay, you have an inside great. source? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for department news, I filed a reserve fund transfer request for $12,474 with the Finance Committee for overtime and other expenses related to the tornado. We probably don't need to charge anything else to the deficit account. Uh, there will be some tree clearing in the months to come in back of the grammar school, but we have no idea of the cost yet. Uh, probably $5,000 for the front part. The back part depends on the restrictions we get from natural heritage, plus we'll need a forester consultant. And speaking of natural heritage, also relating to tornado damage, I am in correspondence with the National Natural Heritage Program about the tree removal behind the school. There is some concern about the front part of the property, as well as definite concern about rare plants in the back section that was damaged. Uh, but I'm seeing what we need to do to move forward. So is this back along the path that yeah. that goes back from the clearing? Yeah. Yeah. It will be more complex than we had hoped originally. These downed trees can be more detrimental to the to the uh, uh, endangered species plants mm. by not removing them rather than leaving them there. I mean, if we leave them there, they're going to be more endangered to these plants than if you get them out of there. I think. And I think they're going to probably look at that. We'll find out everything they're looking at. Um, and uh, on town meeting news, I'm sure you've all noticed that the town report and warrant were mailed last week. Got to my house. I'd like to commend Lisa Tarowski for her work on the town report, which is really her production. Due to the very tight timeline, we will again ask committees to submit reports for the current fiscal year in July and offer a chance to update them. Uh, we always have trouble, you know, getting reports from people. So we're going to ask people for the report in July, and then next spring we'll say, if there's anything you want to add to this, now's your chance. And we'll try to get it done a little bit earlier, because it's, it's the last-minute rush is terrible with the town report, mm -hmm. usually. I'd like to chime in here. I think this is outstanding. Lisa, you did an outstanding job on this. Thank you very much. Uh, it really improves uh, our whole format and the whole way that we present this to town residents and uh, just a, a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. In the communities here, it's too early to have, tell what townspeople think about it because they're just getting it. Yeah. And they have time to, have yeah. time to digest it. My own personal feelings, looking at it at home, it's just, wow, a lot more information than this now than ever been. Outstanding. And I would think the townspeople would like that. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, also, I believe that I have clarified with Jason Silverman the concerns about the right to farm article. Uh, uh, that, the concern about the right to farm article was that it was formatted for the warrant. Previous versions internal to the Agriculture Commission had different edit marks. The version in the warrant is the final clean version from the commission and would be all new language for the bylaws so it is all underlined as per the convention in the warrant and state requirements. Right. So that little conflict we had last week, it was... From what I understand from Jason, uh, it, that this it was, was right. this was the issue and uh, 
um, we don't, and, and and it's fine. Jason will get back to her and make sure that I, she's I, happy. I hope so. Yes. Must be something that she didn't care for. I don't know, know. or, or she was upset about something. That yeah. is the intent. I never heard from her what her. But I don't want her was. standing up at town meeting, right. you know. And, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, I don't. I mean, unless there really is something, and then she can I, amend it. I believe they're going to cover that in. Great. Their meetings. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns tonight? Any concern? No concerns. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's talk about mail. Um, or wait, even before we talk about mail, do you want to say something about this matter? Well, I was going to say under announcements, but under announcements, any time okay. you want. Okay, we'll 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 do it under announcements then. Um, we got a um, a notice from Conway, a 250th celebration in association with the Silver Thorn Theater Company and the Conway Sportsman Club, and they're going to present. Six by six by six, which is going to be a six act uh, play, and that's going to take place on Friday, June 9th at 7 30 p.m., Saturday, June 10th, two showings at 2 p.m. and 7 30 p.m., and this is all at the Sportsman's Club on Elmer Road. Uh, and Tom, this is going to be on the on the town website. It already is. It already is. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, the uh, can I uh, well, uh, go ahead? The comments on that was uh, that uh, person that put those six by six plays together are going to have a preliminary run through on Thursday evening, and they've invited all the 250th committee, all the uh, emergency services personnel. To come to the Thursday evenings, mm. dress so, so they have a crowd dress mm -hmm. rehearsal and, yeah. and to iron things out and put in for their show. But so so they are going to see most, that most would be of the on, town official people on, on the eighth. On the eighth. Okay. Okay. We'll and they have to. We all send in our reservation to them. So they're not okay. They're coming, so. But I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Very good. Um, okay. Now, while we're talking about the 250, if I could bring some up. Sure. Uh, go ahead. Malcolm Kors, who's the head chairman of the parade committee, uh, has asked me to ask the board of selectmen what your preference would be to be in the parade. And the reason he's doing that, he wants to know that now, because he's trying to put together a, 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 a list of everything that's going to be in the parade and where everybody's going to be, be located. He wants to so know he we wants want to know we want to walk, or ride, or do we want to ride? Uh, and I told him, I said, well. I mentioned to the selectmen that there might be a possibility that I could get us an antique car to ride in. It's only a possibility, but uh, so I guess we need to discuss that tonight as to what we want to. I see John on a horse with his saber. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, okay. I have yeah. to go along with this, and I'll tell you, my, 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 all my fire personnel said that they must have took a silent boat or something when I wasn't there. I don't know what they did, but this, they said, we intend on having you in the parade with us. I mean, you can go march with Stuckman, but you will come back when it comes our turn, and you will march with the rest of the family. Okay. As far as you, you got to sell so in order, <laughs> in order for you to do that, I guess we have to be. So I don't. It's up to you guys. I don't. They, we may be one behind the other. I don't know how he's going to lay it out. Yeah, nice little triangle there. So, so Bob is both in the triangle with the selectman and at the head. We of can the, we uh, can march with fire the fire department. department. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know how he's going to lay it out. So. But he's asked that we get that I get back to him as to what our preference would be. Okay. Do we want to march or do we want to ride? I think it, I think riding in an empty car, which I have never done in my life, would be an honor. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do that? One? I will try to get one lined up. I may. I will get back to you as soon as I can. It's a 250-year-old car, too. So <laughs> that, yeah. the, one I have, the one I have in mind is in, uh, uh, I don't know what the year it is. It's an old Rio speed wagon, tour, eight passenger touring, mm. open touring car. Finished beautifully. Mm. Where's that high? I can't tell you. <laughs> no, it's, it's not in town. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so we'll go with Bob's suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'll try yeah. to get that lined up and... Uh, okay. Good. Then I'll wow. get back to Malcolm. Yeah. If otherwise, we'll be walking, I guess. Well, and, and, well you're going to be hoofing it back to the fire department. <laughs> 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 okay. 
<laughs> Borrow one of those Shriners things there to you get go. you back to the fire department. Let me find other things around. All right, next next item, um, okay, is uh, we have an Eversource meeting coming up on Thursday night, which is going to be in the Greenfield Middle School Oratorium at 195 Federal Street in Greenfield, and that's to discuss their distribution rate review hike that's coming up. So that might be of interest to people. Uh, so, so hopefully people will come and they will testify. I mean, I guess they what? haven't had good response wherever they gone. About, a lot of people I read about that. Oh, they, I would they, guess. They've yeah. had a big response, but it's too all negative. Uh, so uh, yes, overwhelmingly opposed. But but what would you expect? Of course, yeah. uh, opposed to the rate increase. Okay, next item is we have a clean sweep bulky waste recycling day on Saturday. Uh, May 6th from 9 to 12, and there are a number of locations. There's Buckland, uh, Northfield, Waitley. Uh, can we put this on this site as well, Tom? It is. Okay. Yep. Great. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next item is the from the Frontier Regional uh, High School uh, from Principal Modesto. He's inviting us to the graduation that's going to be on May 31st at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Uh, oh, that's okay. Graduation on Friday the 2nd. What is it? Class night is Wednesday uh, the 31st. There you go. So, is it typical that the select board goes? Uh, I have always been invited but have not attended. I, have, I didn't go last year either. Yeah. Uh, next item we got is from the Greater Shelburne Falls Business Association. They have a spring breakfast Friday, May 5th from 7.30 to 9 a.m. And that is at um, Berkshire East in Charlemont. And there's information on here to reserve a spot. So if anybody wants to... Okay. So this is 7 p.m. 7 a.m. No, no, breakfast no. a.m. The Frontier Graduation. Oh, yeah, right. right. Yeah. I, the, the next item is the um, fifth anniversary celebration and open house of the Franklin County Regional Dog Shelter. That's going to be at 10 Sandy Lane in Turner's Falls, Sunday the 30th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if anybody's interested in that. We received a very comprehensive annual report from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments uh, on the services that we have used this year from the FERCOG. Very comprehensive report. We've all got a copy of this and there's one available in the office for any member of the public that wants to see it. We received a notice from the Massachusetts Selectments Association about our regional meeting Wednesday, May 24th, 11 a.m. to 1, uh, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the uh, MMA offices in uh, Boston. So anybody who wants to go to that, just uh, fill out the... The long way to go. Yeah. <clears throat> it is a long way to go, yeah. Okay, Bob, did you have any announcements? So I had I had an announcement that uh, I got the final maps from Comcast today, and uh, and they're basically just like the past with one change, and the change was the one home that was questionable, but they are going to wire. Nice. So for those of you who know where the home is, it's the last house on. Route 116 heading into Ashfield. And and the complication was that the driveway ends in Ashfield and Comcast the house is in Conway. didn't notice that the house actually was in Conway. And okay. So they did agree to wire that. And, and I've notified the resident that they're going to get wired and they're, they're very happy. They're very happy. <laughs> yeah, they were very happy. Well, your, your 
relationship over the year with Comcast has really come to fruition, and, and sure. the way we have been. Uh, That's going to be a great thing in town. Tremendous yeah. Yeah. Um, coverage here. Uh, we don't want to tell the other towns how much coverage we got because they'll all be jealous. So um, thank you, Bob, for all your work on that. It's been great. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Any other announcements? No. Okay. Um, our next scheduled meeting is for Tuesday, April 25th. Does that sound? It's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. I don't we'll think so. Go. So I guess it should be. At 4 p.m. It's tomorrow. Yes. We got another first oh, meeting right. tomorrow. Oh, right. That's right. We too have that meeting tomorrow, don't we? Yes. Sorry about that. Okay. Our and then next, our next scheduled second meeting will be will be after next, that next Monday. Next, next Monday. Monday uh, before the uh, That's May one. So do you want that here or do you want that at the grammar school where the pre-town meeting is going to be? We'd be in the library over there. Here we would be. It here. was congested down last year. We had it was very noisy. People were coming in and out. And yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I would recommend just having it here, even if you got to bump it up a little bit, just for time to, to get there. Yeah. All right, we'll look at that because I think FCAT uh, films the pre-town meeting as well. Do they do that? They do. They do. So they would have to move from here to there, but they should be able to do that. Maybe we will have to bump it up. I'll see what can, maybe, we can, maybe we just want to do it in the library. Well, maybe so they just the have library. to move it well, from the library to the library. We had it in the gym last year. It was very noisy and stuff in there. I think that if was we can borrow animal. an extra camera, we yeah, can that was have the a camera animal. here. And they can set up for the pre-town meeting there. Yeah, for the annual town meeting, it was it was awkward maybe to thinking, have it, maybe it was in the annual, gym. I'm thinking of yeah, all right, whatever, whatever works, work it out. Work it out yeah. like TV yeah. crews. All right. Okay. Work it out. The, the reporter man. Yeah. <laughs> the cameraman can. can. <laughs> Camera. <laughs> cameraman can. <laughs> Okay, if there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen.